Welcome to episode 156 of the Startup Show. Today we are here at the offices of Ringe Digital Ventures and I'm talking to David Hook. And we're talking about Ringe Digital Ventures, what they're investing and why you as, as a startup should come and pitch here. But we also talk about if you are looking into becoming here a managing director at a corporate venture capital fund, what you should be doing. Make sure to stay tuned for the whole video. Welcome to episode 156 of The Startup Show. Today we are here in Zurich at the offices of Ringe Digital Ventures and I'm talking to David Hook. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sadwin, for having me. David, it's such a pleasure to have you and discuss with you a little bit about what's going on here at Ringe Digital Ventures. But our tradition on The Startup Show is that the first minute is really dedicated to my guest and to get a little bit of an understanding of uh, who you are. Uh, so maybe take it away and give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself. Hello everyone, my name is David. I'm a managing partner of Ringier Digital Ventures. I studied entrepreneurship here in Switzerland and I started my VC career in the Silicon Valley as an intern. One of my professors during the master's study had a friend who has a small fund in the Silicon Valley and I had the chance um, to go and there and work day by day or night by night and everything with Alex Frias. Um, and so that's how I ended up in the venture business 2010. I moved back to Switzerland and uh, then I had uh, another chance starting also as an intern um, at B2B Partners. Florian gave me this chance. After a couple of weeks, I became analyst and, and uh, from there on, I worked for B2B. Now 2000 and... 12. I moved on. Uh, I remember it right. It's, it's such a long time already. <laughs> I became the opportunity um, to be investment manager at Zakobe Startup Finance. Yes. And since uh, 2015, I'm here at Ringe Digital Ventures. Before we go more into what Ringe Digital Ventures does, maybe you can explain to us what fascinates you about this fast-moving venture capital world. I always thought during my study programs, why do I need all these different disciplines, so from marketing to bookkeeping um, to HR and everything? Because when I used to work, I did a, a, a bank apprenticeship. There you need just a little bit of what we what we learned during during my bachelor and master and here in the VC business I, I, I need to see the full picture yeah. yeah and and I work with young talents very fast decisions need to be taken you have maybe five bad days then five good days so it's always an up and down and you live with the companies also yeah. as an investor especially we are pretty close to our companies. Yes. We try to help them as good as we can also on a daily basis sometimes. That's what, what, what me fascinates and, and, and that's the reason why I'm, I'm still in this business uh, for my young age. I'm in the air since 2010 and I'm now 32 years old. It's quite a long time, but, but every day I, I, I love to go to work yes. um, and, and work with the companies. Before we go really more into deep dive of, of Ringe Digital Ventures, uh, there's a huge difference between a venture capital fund, a ca corporate venture capital fund. Maybe you can elaborate for, for my audience out there who maybe has not heard of the differences uh, of these two types of venture, venture okay. funds. A classical venture fund uh, is, 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 is a structure which you have investors, um, sometimes corporate, sometimes primates, uh, sometimes institutionals. And they usually don't have a, a strategic angle on what you're doing. They're fully um, ROI driven, 100%. And then you have the corporate venture world, um, which was mainly at the beginning driven uh, by strategic ideas, for example, in, in the biotech area. Um, nowadays, it's, it's not very often seen that uh, Novartis develops a no new drug. So often they invest in very early stage uh, drug development companies and at a certain point they take it over because of the risk. So they see strategic areas where they want to go in, mm -hmm. but don't invest with the mother company. They do it through a, through a venture arm. Mm -hmm. And um, nowadays we have, um, I would say a hybrid model um, like we are. So. We, we have one big corporate as investor, but we are also ROI driven. We don't um, take any strategic position 
in a deal, so in terms of options for majorities or, or special rights for Rinier, we act as a classical VC, mm-hmm. but we use um, the strength of a well-established media house um, to bring the company as fast as possible to the next stage. Um, for example, when we jump in at Series A, uh, that means to the Series B level. So let's start to talking about really a deep dive of Rinier Digital Ventures. What, yes. are, what is your focus when you're investing and specifically when you're making investment decisions? We're focusing on internet and mobile space and mainly B2C. That's the DNA of, of Ringier. We share this DNA as well. When it comes down of stage of the company, I would say we're around Series A, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later. But that is mainly to do, we use also media as a currency to invest. So we combine cash and media and media is only useful when the company has a product life on the one hand side and knows a little bit about the conversion funnel. Mm -hmm. So otherwise we drive traffic from our sources to the uh, the company sources and we can't convert. And uh, that's not very satisfying for both sides. So they're unhappy, we're unhappy. So that's the reason why we jump in at Series A. I would say ticket sizes uh, from 500k up to 1 million Swiss francs. We try to follow as good as we can in a Series B, sometimes also in a Series B, uh, C, sorry. But that's mainly what we're doing. When it comes down to decision, um, so we're a team of three and we have an investment committee. And the investment committee has the final decision after a full DD process, uh, due diligence process. And the, the investment committee is, is two guys from us and two guys from Ringier. Now, when you say like, you know, you work very closely with Ringier, which is a publishing house. When you say like, you know, you, you have the mothership, which is Ringier and you have Ringier Digital Ventures and looking at your portfolio, sometimes not everything, you know, makes so much sense when you look at it from the outside. So maybe you can give us some clarity of like, you know, at what point is an investment, you know, strategic where you say we want to bring Ringier as our mothership to the next level. And at what point is it like, you know, where you say like it's a B2B, a B2C investment where it's really ROI driven? When we look at companies, we we do f- the first check we do is does it fit into our criteria? Second check is is it really an investment case from a venture capital perspective? So that means ROI. Then we decide how close is the is the deal to the, the main activities of Ringier. So is it really really in the inner circle? So a must do deal from the Ringier perspective. And then we hand it over to the M&A team. So that's that's not our home turf. So, but there is always not only the inner circle. There is there is a, a second and a third circle, for example. And we're really looking at the second and the third circle when it comes down to topics like classifieds for cars. What could be the next big thing? Or mm-hmm. or when it comes down to mobility or home services, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, this is um, um, our turf. And then, of course, we have uh, deals like, like Foodspring or Yamo, which from a Ringier perspective is mainly interesting as an as a investment case. And we can help the company to become big in Switzerland uh, because we have the media, we have the power. And, of course, we try to give them enough space um, in our media with our products uh, to become successful and, and famous in Switzerland as well. When you look at, let's say, the, uh, when we change side and we look into the startup perspective, what would it be that you would call a startup that maybe has the choice of investors and say, like, okay, we are the best ones? What is like your your thing that you're telling the startups that um, you know are thinking of coming here for an investment? We look always at the team we work with, um, and and the startup should do the same. So we're married for two, four six, maybe 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, we need to work together. It's a lot about people. As much data-driven we try to be, venture capital is, is in my eyes, still also a people's game. Mm-hmm. It starts with the network where you get your deals from. Can you trust them? It ends up um, between entrepreneur and, and investor. And um, so I suggest also the entrepreneurs to look, look really close at the team, the investment team they have to work with. Of course, there is always a discussion, should I choose the, the, the full cash package or should I choose 
the media cash package from Ringier. Um, but as we are really close and we have shown that the media works and we had successful exits uh, already. So um, where we were lead, uh, basically, and also on the board, they should also look at the people and how they interact and do reference calls about us as well. We do the same about <laughs> them. Yes. So why not? Yeah. Um, and, and then afterwards decide who should be on the cap table. Yeah. Are you really happy with your investor? Because during fun times when everything, every report <laughs> shows super Pakistan. high growth, everything is green, burn rate is lower than expected, every investor is fun to work with. But I'm sure every journey of a startup will have some trouble in it. Yeah then it's really important that you have the right investors on board. And I mean on board and not the ones who, who, who are leaving the deck uh, when the, the sea getting a little bit rougher. Yeah. Um, when you look into, you know, the, this, there's the idea of having a venture arm for a big corporate. Yeah. Uh, what do you think in general is the landscape here in Switzerland? Is this something that you feel like every big corporate should have? When they do it the right way, <laughs> yes. Um, for me, um, corporate venturing um, is, is kind of in, in a hype phase or, yeah. or um, um, a lot of companies try to do that, try different ways. Sometimes they do first an accelerator or an incubator, whatever, um, which is personally for me the, the, the most difficult one to start. Then we, we see a lot of, 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 of CVCs are coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, but often uh, they try to do a mixed bag. So strategic investments, ROI driven, uh, reputation driven investments. When you want to be successful, you, de- you need to decide what focus you want to have. And afterwards, also choose the right structure after you have decided on the strategy. So you go strategic. You need normally the R&D guys or the guys who knows your actual business quite good. Mm-hmm. When you do an ROI-driven one, you should probably maybe take one from outside of your existing business, which has a couple of years uh, worked in the venture business and, and has a neutral view on what you have done in a couple of past years. And, and when you do reputation driven, you maybe need a marketing guy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, there were, you know, as you said about like uh, background research, we obviously do that also about our guests. <laughs> we do ask our audience uh, if they have any questions for yeah. you. Um, and sometimes uh, we have really interesting questions. Um, and sometimes they're so interesting that I would like to read them off because um, they're a little bit complicated. I want to make sure I get Good. this right. So how do you deal with the inherent conflict of interest of corporate investors? In theory, corporates want to acquire technologies at the lowest possible price, and founders and other investors want to create the highest possible value for price. Yeah, a classical question yes. I've heard <laughs> often. Um, that's the reason why we decided to be ROI-driven. So I worked for classical corporate venture funds in the past. I asked the same questions to corporate venture guys. What is your r- real interest about doing a deal? Um, do you want to get in or buy at a technology or company at the very early stage for a very early price or, the, or like at least a stake of the company? Or are you really interested to bring the company to the highest possible level? And, and for us, it's pretty clear our goal is we want to bring the company uh, to the highest possible level. But uh, for Ringier, there is also a huge benefit. I mean, they are our LP. They know pretty clear what's going on in our portfolio. And if they believe a company could be of interest for them, they can maybe start um, um, the talks earlier or, and build a relationship between the management team there and Ringier itself. And also in the exit process, of course, price matters. Mm-hmm. But also, usually the, 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 the founders have to stay one, two, three more years in an earnout period. And then you get married one more time. After you're <laughs> married um, with your investor, you married your buyer yes. yeah, uh, for a couple of years. And also there, the relationship building is also important because after working hard uh, for uh, a long period building up a startup, that roller coaster. I'm sure um, 
if you get bored, you want to make sure that the roller coaster is not so tough anymore. Yeah. And, and so the relationship there is also very important. And for us, as I said at the beginning, it's very clear. We don't take any strategic position in the deal, especially in the terms we negotiate. Yeah. And we fully believe since day one, since I work in the venture business, the best entrepreneurs don't give away in a serious seat, serious A, the best opportunity for an exit. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for the best um, investors. And we want to work with these two groups. Yeah. And so we need to have this strategy to be successful at the end of the day. So when you look, I think based on Crunchbase, you have about like one investment a month, more or less, of which you're more or less half the time the lead investors, I would say, correct me if I'm totally wrong. <laughs> so we have, so we're now almost four years on the road. Yeah. Um, we have done so far, we invested in 18 companies, a couple of more rounds, um, yes. uh, but 18 companies. Two are already sold um, successfully, and uh, the rest of it is still alive, mainly on a very good track. You know, how often do you take a board seat, and how do you make sure that when you take one, you're actually being, you know, efficient when you have so many mandates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're often on the board or a board observer. We have now uh, 16 portfolio companies. I have the biggest chunk of it because I'm here since day one, yes. then Benjamin and then Tom. I, I try to uh, to stay up to date uh, with every reporting, with every email, so I don't need to prepare the board meetings for two days only. I'm on track, yes. um, and, and I think that's for me the most important point, to be close with the company, a lot of calls with them uh, or emails, and we are very strict about the reporting. So yeah. we ask for reporting, we send them reminders often um, if we didn't get any reporting, and we look at the quality of the reporting. We, we want to see, of course, numbers, we wanna, but we want to we also see um, a qualitative part from the leadership team, what was good, what, what went wrong, where are the challenges. So that helps me to prepare for the board meetings. Yeah. That makes it much more easier. Now let's look a little bit on, on trends. I mean, I'm yeah. sure um, you know, there's these different reports you can download, but I want to hear some insight from what you actually see in the market, um, what kind of like, companies are pitching you at the moment, what areas are, like, let's say, the future mega trends. It's hard to say future megatrends, you, you read them often. I, I could say a, a blockchain, AI, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of technology, they are right. But are they already ready to be a success case also for a B2C company, mm -hmm. for example, which is mainly our interest? Um, I would say not yet. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking at right now are, are we call that second or third generation marketplaces because we're heavily, heavily invested in marketplaces. We, we, we like the business model, not the classified model where you put um, 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 uh, your house, for example, on a mainly list and then you get any contact from everywhere. So uh, more smarter ways um, of marketplaces in, in terms of of connecting buyer and seller, um, digital uh, ways to, for example, sell and buy a house, purely digital processes. So these are the topics we are currently looking at it because they have maybe a runway uh, for, uh, I would say, three to five years uh, where they are everywhere in Europe, I believe. Um, and, and, and so the, the, the future big trends with such a small fund to invest in, these are two big bets for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the reason why we, we, we look basically what's going on the next three to five years where we could jump in and be successful. Then the, the really big, big, big trends, quantum computing, whatever, um, where it takes a lot of time and more money to be successful and, and we would be very diluted if we jump in at the yes. early stage because we don't have these fund sizes right. which is needed to do that. When you look at, um, at Switzerland, uh, yeah. maybe um, you can even focus maybe only on Zurich, what do you see um, in terms of startup mentality or maybe 
I, I really like, you know, something that we maybe could improve here. Do you notice anything that we could say, like, you know, the startup mentality here in Switzerland is still lacking certain criteria? I think uh, we're doing better over the couple of last years, especially for a, a for an ecosystem, uh, I talk now about Switzerland and only Zurich, it's very important that you have success cases, mm -hmm. which have an exit, either IPO or trade sale, whatever, which could be a role model um, uh, for, for the younger generations. The founders um, usually are quite open to help the younger entrepreneurs. So this kind of ecosystem is coming up right now. You can say about, for example, the Sumber uh, brothers, you can hate them, you can love them, whatever, but they did a lot of very good things for Germany with their company. They reinvested everything with Rocket. They went all in one more time yep. uh, with Zalando and so on. We need these kind of companies on the one hand side, which supports the ecosystem, serial entrepreneurs or, or entrepreneurs, which help uh, the younger generation of founders um, and, and I like to see so the, the Doodle founders do it, the Dine Deal founders do it now, the Mobile founders and that's what we need to, to get the next step. And on the investor side, we're still lacking in, in, in growth funds and, and also um, we have a very strong angel network, I will believe, which also uh, developed over the the last years because it's getting more common to invest in startups. We have a couple of good early stage funds that could be more, but we're doing okay. Uh, but when, it, when we see growth, so around series B, we have often problems uh, to raise rounds between, I would say four and 10 million. And then later stage PE and so on, we're doing this good. Is a different story. This is a different story, <laughs> but there I think we're also good. But these the, 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 a lack um, around Series B, I would say, which we have to fulfill. Yes. In general, the round sizes I believe needs to go good. up a, a bit that we are we're we're able to compete. Back to the founders, where I believe we're very strong is at Deep Tech. This is uh, also including life science and everything. Where we are lacking is the consumer part. But um, we have good universities, ETH, EPFL, so no question why we are very good at, at Deep Tech. What is success in life for you? Be happy and healthy. How do you achieve and maintain a balanced life? My family helps me a lot. Sometimes my wife remembers me to do that. And sports. What would you like to see in the next five years in your ecosystem? That we have good growing companies, um, good growing startups, more exits, and uh, bigger and more funds. How do you keep focused and not distracted? Ooh, I learned it pretty early in my life to be focused. Um, I played a lot of hockey, so I had to do my homework straight after coming home from school that, because I know afterwards I, I want to go to practice. <laughs> so that was a good school for me to stay focused, to do what I need to do, that I can do afterwards what I want to do. That's, that, that helps me still nowadays um, to prioritize and, and focus hopefully on the right stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and who is your role model? I wouldn't say I have a clear role model, not for my life, not for my work. Uh, when it comes down um, to, to venture capital, um, um, a lot of people influence me, or, or mainly three main people influenced me. Uh, this is Alex, which gave me uh, the chance to do it at Silicon Valley. This is Eric Capuya, um, who, who brought me on um, at ZKB, and, and of course Florian Schweitzer, which uh, gave me the first job in venture capital here in Switzerland. So these are the three mentors um, of mine, and, but not a clear role model. I tried to be myself, stay myself, but um, had a huge influence on myself. I think very important is uh, um, to start at some point as an intern or as an analyst. Do that work because 
It helps you to understand when it comes down to look at teams, uh, look at technologies and so on and so forth. So you can't always go in and start as a partner or as an investment manager. I started after my master's study as an intern with very, very low salary. I don't care. So I filled my backpack uh, with all these experiences. I believe helped me to become what I'm nowadays. And, and please go that way. It's not a waste of time. It helps you really to understand the business. Very good. David, thank you so much for being on the show today. I thank really you appreciate one it. more time for having me. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, everybody who tuned in today. Make sure to stay a few more seconds so you'll see who is up next Monday. And I'll see you there. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Markus Groß. I'm a computer science professor at ETH Zurich, but I'm also a head of research of the Walt Disney Company, and I'm leading this lab here. And in my third role, I'm an investor and startup entrepreneur. Tune in next week. I will tell you a lot of insights uh, from these different roles and give you a little bit of advice on what to think about when you create your own startup company.